Daddy, well, look how you've grown. <laughs> so good to see you, son. Did you win the war all by yourself? Oh, I had a little help. <laughs> well, I salute you. Well, then you salute us all. Hi, Billy. Look who's been taking care of me while you were gone. <laughs> Marco, is that you? <laughs> well, you've grown every which way. <laughs> I was just delivering a book your daddy ordered. Daddy, have you been reading again? I have, son. Daddy, I thought I warned you about reading. That could make you smart. <laughs> I know, I know. Call the hillbilly police. Mr. Kane, Billy's been sending me his stories from overseas, and I got a stack of them all edited. And I got published in the Stars and Straps. Billy! Did you get my latest? I sure did. You can come by the bookstore and pick it up. Well, what'd you think? You don't have to know everything all at once. Margo, that is so you. <laughs> now, where's Mama? Or are you making her plow again, Daddy? <laughs> Billy, I've got to get back. What's gone into her? <laughs> and where's Mama? Mama! <laughs> what is it, Daddy? Way to write this song. We had a visitor while you were away. Unwelcome as he was, he came on in one day. He sat down quietly at your mother's side. Time in the night, she's gone.
You know how much she loved you, son. She had no fear of death. She went on peacefully. She just closed her eyes and drifted off to sleep. She's gone. She's gone. You know how much she loved you, son. Let's walk on over there and lay a rose upon her grave. Why don't you pick out the floor of bundle rose, son? That was her favorite. they have to say. Mama, when I was in mud up to my knees, I, I thought it'd be you more than me. Not this way around. Sorry, Daddy, put an angel on your grave. You used to make fun of people for doing that. <laughs> you always said you'd rather let your deeds speak for your time on earth. Mama, thank you for the way that you raised me. That the way you spoke your, your parlance around the house made me a curious lover of words. And you always pointed me towards the writers who used them well. Remember when you had me copy stories out of the Asheville Southern Journal just, just so I would know what it felt like to write well? Well, I made it back home like you always said I would. I just never thought homecoming would be this cruel. You are my mama, now and forever. She's gone. She's gone. You know how much she loved you, son. such an avid raider. <laughs> Since you took over the bookstore, when you stopped working at the soda shop, I lost three pounds. <laughs> Margo, 
Would you like to go to the movie sometime? Oh, I don't want you to spend your money on me. It'd be cheaper than buying all these damn books. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Margo. Uh, sorry, it took me a while to make it in. I thought it might. How are things with Daddy? He's doing better. It's strange. We, we both swear we can hear her call out to us sometimes. And how are you doing? I started rhyming again, and, <laughs> and that brings me comfort. <laughs> a thesaurus. What are you writing now? No, Max just returned it. He thought it was a book about dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, and Billy, I read the story you sent me. Oh, I was wondering about that. B what'd you think? Well, it started out great, but... Oh. Then it got better and better. It did? Oh, Billy, you've grown up. And so is your writing. Now, I caught a few typos, and I retyped them on heavy bond. In fact, uh... <laughs> I'll retop them all. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Look, I, I was wondering, how would you feel if I submitted some of my stories to the Asheville Southern Journal? Oh, Billy, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> you were always so tentative about it. What made you decide that? I'm ready for my life to begin. I'm ready for it all to start. My heart's about to bust. Don't lead the way. I must follow my own bright star. Edna, we still have that special delivery stamp I've been saving. We sure do. Oh, I'm not mailing them, Margo. No, I'm going to hand carry them to Asheville and, and sleep like a dog on their doorstep until I get published. Good luck, Billy. Many a long, cold night. I huddled down in the dark I made a vow If I ever made it out I'd follow my own bright star Bright star Keep shining for me Shine on and see me through Bright star Keep shining for me And one day I'll shine for you for what it's worth, I'll miss you. You never know what life will bring. Only what you bring to life. Hopes and dreams and fine imaginings, they happen in their own good time. I've seen a weak man Oh, I've seen a strong man Oh, oh.
Hello? Is this the Asheville Southern Journal? Good question, because this sign is often wrong. <laughs> Don't mind, Daryl. Well, if someone want to submit their stories to your magazine... Well, let me hand them to the nice man. And then wave them goodbye. Hey! <laughs> Why wave them goodbye? Because our editor, Miss Alice Murphy, is one of the keenest editors in America. The New Yorker magazine sent people down here to try and hire her away. Mm -hmm, but she wants to stay right here in North Carolina. Well, that's good. Well, not for young tadpoles like you. She once made Ernest Hemingway cry. He lay right there, banged his fist on the floor, and sobbed. Why? He used a comma to join two independent clauses. <laughs> Listen, I came all the way from Hayes Creek, and, and I gotta get back, so... Oh, well, aren't we busy? Can I pick up my stories tomorrow? <laughs> you think we're gonna read your stories by tomorrow? If at all? I'm sorry, but we don't even read Young Riders anymore without a whopping letter of recommendation. <laughs> now, where did that door go? But Thomas Wolfe read them. Thomas Wolfe? Yes. Yes, he wrote me while I was overseas and told me I had talent. You can leave your stories here. I'm a great admirer of Thomas Wolfe. Well, thank you, ma'am. You must be Miss Murphy. I don't have to be, but I am. <laughs> well, my name is William Kane. I'm writing your name down. <laughs> <laughs> William. All right. Thank you. <gasps> Mr. Ames, hand me those stories. Why? I'm going to read them. He's a liar, and liars sometimes make very good storytellers. Now, how about those new submissions? Oh, well, we have several. Um, this one from Carl Sandberg. Well, we should certainly take a look at that. Tennessee Williams. Very promising new writer, yes. And uh, one from Joseph Algonquin. Another one? He is always terrible. Uh, uh, Miss Murphy? It's time you knew Joseph Algonquin's my pen name. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you've improved. I'll take a look at it. Oh, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Murphy, there is a dance at the Shiny Penny tonight. And? Those officers returning home keep asking about you. When a female walks into that place, there isn't a head that doesn't swivel. No, tonight I think I'm going to cozy up to a few unnecessary adverts and cut their heads off. <laughs> I've heard stories about you, Miss Murphy. You weren't always such a, a wallflower. No, not always. But the whole world is rejoicing about the war being over. And you should get out and celebrate too. Come with us just this once. Way back in the day, I would have gone with you Way back in the day You could not have kept me away I was the love of the party I was happy and carefree day But he, he was next to me We'd sing and we'd sway To every song together Way back in the day I could not wait to
Well, if it isn't the little princess Zebulun. Princess, what's the matter with repairing an icebox? Jimmy Ray, an icebox has no moving parts. My granny could repair an icebox. There's ice and a box. I think you're just showing off your muscles. Keep talking, Alice Murphy. I'm curious how your mind works. Okay. You remind me of Adonis. You know who Adonis is? I sure do. He's a Greek god. <laughs> well, you remind me of him. In fact, you remind me of the myth of Adonis when he repaired the icebox. <gasps> you ever think you might be too smart for this town? All the time. <laughs> what makes you so sure? I entered an essay contest down in Raleigh. First place was five dollars, and I won it. What was it about? I wrote about how there should be a rebirth of Southern writers. All writing about the Southern way. And that's how we can make our voices known. Well, I don't see a group of judges from Raleigh could turn that down. They couldn't. I took that five dollars and I put it right in my college fund. How much you got in your college fund? Five dollars. <laughs> Do you want a biscuit? I wouldn't mind having a biscuit. <clears throat> Your hands are dirty. You don't want to eat a dirty biscuit. You better feed it to me then. Now you and I were having the exact same food. You got a little wildcat about you, Alice Murphy. Hey, what's that book? Hey there. F. Scott Fitzgerald. He's a new writer. I know who he is. The Beautiful and Damned. Is that us, Jimmy Ray? Damned if I know, but you're sure beautiful. I finished it. You can keep it. If my daddy sees the title, he'll kill me. Read it under the covers. Who are you taking to the couple's day dance? Oh, I don't know. Yet. <laughs> well, I'm standing right here in front of you. That's not proper. Are you asking me? I read it in a book somewhere. You got a plant and idea in a boy's head. Well, that must be a pretty smart book. You're a young girl and you ought to know better than to be here. What would everybody think? Whoa, mama better back up slowly Make a quick getaway and hurry on home Whoa, mama at the rate you're going When your papa get a shotgun have to run Man, I feel hide in the shadows Fall out of trees Wait by your window whisper Bless you when you sneeze Someone will look at you just like this Someone will ask you for a kiss You're a smart girl, make fool somebody I'm a smart guy, and I know that it won't be me. We'll see. Oh, my. Take a second look before you set your sights on me. Oh, I'm a small town boy with a heart as wild as a big city. <laughs> Someone will take your hand just like so. Someone will never want to let you go Someone will put you on a pedestal Someone will tell you you're incredible I'm a young girl, I don't want to go dancing I want to dip that floor with a handsome boy in town
you're a sweet girl. Wrap a man around your baby. On your feet, girl. Get going, cause it won't be me. Somebody's gonna buzz around. You should have been here helping in the kitchen. Where, where, where'd you go? No daughter of mine ought to worry me so. You're the black sheep, little lost lamb. Should have raised you with a firmer hand. Black sheep, little lost lamb. All you ever do is reprimand. Shame, shame, shame on you. There ain't no limit to the trouble you brew. Shame, shame, shame on me. You make a mockery of the family. To the black sheep, a little lost lamb. When you're gonna love me just the way I am. I pray that you. You've been so hard headed since the day you old bird. Why, why in the world would you do us all a favor? Be a good little girl. You're the black sheep, a little lost lamb. Should raise you with a firmer hand. Black sheep, a little lost lamb. Always up to your shenanigans. You ought to start towing the line. That's all I ever do around here is tow the line. Jimmy Ray, and you were supposed to be here a while ago. Sorry, Daddy. I was out fixing Aunt Adele's icebox. Can you believe my son? I'm trying to hand over an empire to this boy, and he's off fixing an icebox. And what's that? Application for college. I've been thinking about it. Four years away from home when everything you need to know, I'm teaching you right here within these walls. Your grandfather taught me and I teach you. That chain must not be broken. Well, Daddy, I understand, but I thought we'd discuss this. Stanford, do I sense disinclination? None of my business, Mayor. There's a whole world outside of Zebulon. I want to get to know it. Who are you getting this from? And where's that book you were reading? I gave it away. Good. Let the jazz age infect someone else. Uh, Mayor, the Conklins. The Conklins? And Charlotte, what about them? They have a beautiful daughter, Ola. Well, 
A daughter with resources. <laughs> Stanford, what exactly isn't your business? The Conklins have produce trucks that travel across this state, and we are the second biggest purveyors of produce for 300 miles. You want me to marry someone for her trucks? Now that is an equation they won't teach in college. <laughs> Where is the romance in that? Romance? I have no comment. No comment? What do you think that was? Look, just have lunch with her. Daddy, I couldn't do that. I know her. She's a dumbbell. All right, well, it doesn't have to be her. The Wilsons in Winston-Salem have a daughter and a very active horse farm. I've met her. She's indistinguishable from the horses. <laughs> All right, well, how about Naomi Wise, the daughter of tobacco? And I hear she plays the banjo. All right, I know. Daddy, <laughs> I couldn't carry on a conversation with any one of them. <clears throat> you don't have to carry on a conversation. <laughs> have you ever seen me carry on a conversation with your mother? <laughs> it's not necessary. And that is a tragedy. Son, the way it works is the business is handed down. And we marry conveniently in order to live well. Don't break the chain. Right, Daddy? A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do When a man's gotta do what he's got to A well-bred wife with a silver spoon and knife Will butter your bread twice as good as you do I remember when I was your age That's when I was settling down Your mother and I were engaged and I opened up a bank account You can't expect the future To be just like the past You haven't got a loser Please try to understand When I stood tall side by side with your grandpa There was just nothing at all we couldn't do With all due respect I observe and I object There's no rush for me to step into your shoes You can't waste your time on foolish things When there's real work to be done There won't be any stopping you and me When you do what I tell you, son You have no idea what I would do to protect this dynasty I get through to you. Daryl and I read your stories. Oh, yes, and I thought they were extraordinary. Really? Extraordinary? Sorry I said that too fast. Extraordinary. <laughs> Don't mind, Daryl. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, my nerves are jittery enough already. Shot of vodka? <laughs> I don't drink. Billy! If you want to be a writer, you have to drink alcohol! <laughs> and feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> we'll meet you one night at the Shiny Penny. <clears throat> oh, going. <laughs> Well, Mr. Kane, it's very rare for a young writer to make it past our gatekeeper, Mr. Ames. Your Thomas Wolfe letter certainly helped. You said he wrote you last year. Yes, uh, yes, Thomas was, Thomas was very kind to me. Thomas Wolfe letters are extremely rare. Did you bring it with you? As a matter of fact, I did. I'm never far from it. 
If I were you, I would protect this letter. It could be very valuable one day. Well, thank you. It is indeed already valuable since Thomas Wolfe died seven years ago. <laughs> huh. I missed that. <laughs> uh, Miss Murphy, you can imagine how difficult it was to get that letter. Are you sure? I'm as sure as he is. He's buried right here in Asheville. Look, Miss Murphy, I was just doing what I had to, okay? I, I never would have made it through that door. Obviously. Did you even read my stuff, Miss Murphy? Here are your stories back, Mr. Kane. Did you read them at all? Like I said, here are your stories back, Mr. Kane. Except for this one, which I am buying from you for ten dollars. But I thought you just said... I am not publishing it, but I am investing in you. You have a flair, Mr. Kane. Not for the scourge of war, but for gentleness and tenderness, and also the well-timed lie. You write well. You mean that, Miss Murphy? I don't have time to be handing out compliments I don't mean. But you will write better when you find your voice. You need to find a sweeping tale of pain and redemption. And you'll find it in the people you know, ain't in the people you meet. Ten bucks. <laughs> I'm rich. <laughs> me to move on. From what? Us. I hope you understand. It's not it's you. It's me. Char Ray. Well, she's got it here, ready, just for you. I trimmed it in at the waist, you slender thing. Tomorrow I turn 21. I've known Billy Kane since I was six, and it's time he sees me in a new way. As the woman I am. Good for you. So, uh, I heard Billy's back from Asheville today. And he said he was coming over with a surprise. A present. Something he got there. There's a jewelry store in Asheville. <laughs> Marco, the bookstore looks spick and span. And I just made room for a new magazine rack. Well, that's appropriate. Oh, how so? I uh, got you a little something. Oh, you said you did. I was one. It's my new address in Asheville. I'm going to live there and write there. Uh, are you sure that? Look at this. Ten dollars from the Asheville Southern Journal. Oh, not published yet, but. Oh, Billy, that's so exciting. Real adventure. Oh, and I can still send you all of my stories if that's all right. Of course. You're gonna need someone to cash that check. Cash it? You kidding? I wanna frame it. If you frame it, you can't cash it. Huh. <laughs> well, hello and goodbye then. 
You gonna miss me? Like I miss trouble. Margo, did you ever think you might be selling one of my stories in your magazines? Yes. Oh, Margo, I could almost kiss you. <laughs> Get to Asheville, ride me if you will. Tell me how you're doing, how it's treating you. Do you like your new job? Did you find a new love? Is it everything that you were dreaming of? Ooh, if it don't. When you were over in the war, I fought him off before. I'll just stay on the lookout and I'll listen for the sound of your old 34 Ford coming down the road. to Asheville, write me if you will, let me know that you still think about me.
Did anyone see you slip away? Not a person. Anybody see you? I don't care who sees me with you. You don't care who sees you with anybody. I heard you head to that Magnolia house with Ola Conklin. Uh, <gasps> Daddy made me. Thinks it's good business. He made you dance with her too? Daddy still thinks we're living in the old south. Well, aren't we? This is Hicksville, Jimmy Ray! <laughs> we're the Hicks in the Ville if we don't get out. So, what was she like? Who? Oh, the Conklin! Well, she sneaked rum in her tea. And that's something to her credit. Why are you favoring her? You should be jealous. Not me. I gotta believe in myself, don't I? Are you playing me like a fiddle house with you? I'm not playing. Alice! Alice! Where is that girl? I think she went down by the river. She sure is down by the river a lot, and she never brings her rod and reel. <laughs> I think she's landing a fish anyway. Alice! Alice! Oh my goodness. That's Daddy. It's almost dark out. I gotta get back soon. What could be better than holding you close to me like this? I'll be in trouble if I stay up late again. Ten more minutes in my arms won't do any harm. What could be better than holding you close to me? I can't imagine improving this moment at all. If I asked you for a kiss, how could I Strike me if I'm lying.
Well, it's definitely a malady we see around here sometimes that affects young women. You're about 11 weeks pregnant. Oh, Lord. Oh, it ain't the Lord that done it. <laughs> that only happened once that I know of. You've been running around, Alice Murphy. I don't call it running around. Love is not running around. Does he love you? I think he does. Alice, when you tell him this, you'll know. Dr. Norquist. Zebulon has a thousand eyes and one single tiny, tiny mind. How can trouble and happiness walk hand in hand? Well, they sometimes do. What should I do now? Come back in several weeks. I can handle this on account for now. And don't you worry. You can trust me with this news. I hope you don't love her. What is it, Daddy? Jimmy Ray? Are you the father of Alice Murphy's child? It's conceivable. <laughs> Jimmy Ray, sometimes you are too eloquent. Is she gonna have a baby? It appears she is. I should go see her. And what? And tell her I love her. But you don't mean that. Now it might feel like you do, but you're young, Jimmy Ray. I know those feelings. Those misleading ones. I've felt them before. But Alice, I see her, and it's different. She has special qualities special that- Special qualities? Special qualities, these special qualities exist in your imagination. And the last thing we need is you dragging around some cattle bride and child everywhere we do business. You let me take care of this. Daddy, I'll handle this myself. It's my right and my responsibility. sin into our blissful Eden. You made my son weak. Have you ever stood up against society? Very few can withstand it. There are ways to undo these things. Undo. That's a crime upon a crime. This child would destroy Jimmy Ray's career. I thought you loved my son. I do. North Carolina doesn't abide illicit couples. You don't want to go to a home for wayward girls. They're like prisons. I know a place. Several hours out of town. A cabin in the woods where you can stay until you figure out what you want to do. I've done it for others. Sounds to me like you're being offered a sanctuary. Alice, Jimmy Ray is going to ask you to marry him. But you must say no. He's still a boy. Now if you wait just a year, he will be one of the leaders of Zebulun. 
and soon all of North Carolina. If this were known, there would be people that wouldn't do business with Jimmy Ray. You wouldn't do that to Jimmy Ray. Of course I wouldn't. Of course. Well, then you must wait. Wait, Alice Murphy. Wait. Go to the cabin in the woods. standing in a moonbeam. That's the way I feel. I want to set things right. Marry me. Will you marry me, Alice Murphy? Yes! Yes, of course! Of course I will, Jimmy Ray! <laughs> Not right away. Not right now. What? Why? We need some time people in this town always looking at us sideways? I don't care about that. And so many reasons. Dr. Norquist offered me a cabin just for a short while where I won't be seen. It's the only thing that makes sense, right? Why are you giving me trouble, Alice? Don't you know I'm always going to give you trouble, Jimmy Ray? What oh. is it, Alice? <laughs> oh, it felt like a butterfly. I can't wait to meet you and shake your little hand. If you're like your mama, you'll make me a happy man. I'm gonna make you a promise to love you for all time. I'm gonna make you a promise to keep your hand in mine. My, my, my baby, I can't wait to see you. My, my baby, I can't wait to see you. Miss Murphy asked me to meet her here. Am I being sent home? It's been 12 weeks and, and I haven't published anything. She's on her way. Well, that sounded scary. Oh, Daryl can make happy birthday sound scary. <laughs> Show him, Daryl. Happy birthday! <laughs> <clears throat> oh, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. <sighs> Mr. Kane, your latest submission is a bit of a mess. What's going on? I'm sorry, Miss Murphy. I, I'd sent it to Margot for editing, but I hadn't gotten it back yet, so I just turned it in. Frankly, I'm starting to get a little discouraged. Well, don't get discouraged. Work on it with Daryl. He's a fine little editor. Yeah, then why'd my mouth just go dry? Huh. Can I work on it with Lucy? No, I should keep you out of harm's way. <laughs> Miss Murphy, what did you think of it? What do I think of it? Yes. Well, first you need to cut out about 300 words. Okay, 300, wow. Which 300? 
the superfluous ones. You look shocked. No, I just always thought it was pronounced superfluous. <laughs> <laughs> and you should begin with your second paragraph, not your first. The action starts there. Well, what should I do with the first paragraph? Well, you can turn it into a lullaby because it put me to sleep. Look. Okay, anything else? You need to cut the word twixt. Well, now, wait a minute. What's wrong with twixt? You don't like twixt? Use between. Why? Because a man wrote this, not Tinkerbell. <laughs> and the second to last paragraph should be cut. What? Well, Miss Murphy, I, I cried when I wrote that. Clearly. It's as purple as a baboon's butt. Miss Murphy. Well, it's true. And then there's this last sentence. Flows nicely, but I'm curious. Yeah, about what? Now why? Why, Mr. Kane, would you end your essay with a word that 99% of our readers would have to look up? Dot, dot, dot. The longing of the human heart and its search for propinquity. I did that on purpose, Miss Murphy. It's the only $5 word in the whole piece, and because of it, I get the impact of the ending twice. The reader lands on a striking word with an elegant cadence, propinquity. Then, as they flip through their dictionary, the longing of the human heart and its search for closeness. Well, I'll tell you what. If you can sway Daryl, you can sway me. So you're saying there's hope? Let me put it this way. Nobody has ever swayed Daryl. Bright star, keep shining for me. Shine on and see me through. Bright star, keep shining for me. And one day I'll shine for you. I'm glad the shame is here in the woods and not in our house. Quiet. You wake the baby with your ranting. Thank God it's a boy. It was Eve who tempted Adam. Am I right, Alice? You bewitched him! Mr. Murphy. Ladies. You came to see your grandson. So, this is the child. Isn't he beautiful? Yes, fine looking. We named him after his daddy. Isn't that right, little James? And where is Jimmy Ray? He's been here every day cooing over his boy. He's on an errand to Durham. On a Sunday. Stanford, you come to see the baby? I love children. <laughs> <clears throat> now, this terrible and tragic situation must be salvaged. Fortunately, there is a solution. And I am here to see that it is implemented. A legal and completely anonymous adoption. What? No, that is not a solution. A legal and completely anonymous adoption. That is the only solution. I have the papers drawn up here. Are you aware of this? Somewhat. And I have spoken with Jimmy Ray, and he agrees. He agrees? He certainly does. I doubt that. Didn't he, Stanford? He sure did. Now, you are not of age which means only the father has to give consent, seeing as the true father is decidedly unclear. You, you watch the way you talk about our daughter. Nobody is taking the baby. You have got to be reasonable. Don't deny him a better way of life when he could grow up with pride. 
Folks will laugh and talk behind his back If you bring home a bastard child You can take him He is my baby You can take my baby boy Daddy, don't you let him you want to do this? Don't you want what's best for him? I know people wealthy and agreeable who would like to take him in. In Raleigh. You can't! They've already been contacted. I will sign it. No, you won't! I have to do what no. I think is right for our goal. No! 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 I'm gonna get back. Don't be selfish. Let him go and help him leave behind a world of shame. If he's ridiculed and they make fun of him at school, you'll only have yourself to blame. Got it. 
seven, Raleigh, Charlotte, and Chapel Hill. Number seven, Ford. You doing okay, Alice? First time away from home. You always were too smart for this town, and Chapel Hill is a wonderful school. And you got a scholarship. That came out of the blue. How's Daddy doing? I know your father is a tender man. Right now, he's searching scripture to justify what he did, but the Bible is not obliging. <laughs> How's Jimmy Ray? Mama, when I get to Rock, he's gonna meet me there and we're gonna find our baby. Well, that'll be a joyous day for all of us. You got the burning fever You got the night, you got the day We're never all alone So long, sweet embraces So long, summertime You got to fight, you got to say I'm never gonna stay down You got the light, you got the way I got the old dark cloud The sun is gonna shine again shouldn't be drinking. Something's got to calm my agitation. You should be lying down. Here's your medicine. <sighs> well, there's no doubt about it. 
I'm turning yellow as a sunflower. There's poison in my liver, they tell me. That's a swift thing. Maybe not. A suitcase? Where are you headed? Chapel Hill. Overnight? Maybe more. Maybe a week or more. Who's gonna take care of me? I've arranged it. You take care of me. The son takes care of the father the same way the father took care of the son. I'll be back. What's in Chapel Hill? What do you think? That girl that almost ruins you. You stay away from her. Trouble once is trouble always. She and I are bonded and we have a child out there somewhere. Together, maybe we can find him and lay claim. Find him? Why not? You'd be surprised what can be accomplished. You will never find that child! What do you mean? You're still holding that suitcase, Jimmy Ray. That's better. I took care of my son that night. I've made everything right for you. So you could go into the world without encumbrance. That adoption should have been my decision. There was no adoption. What are you talking about? I cleansed you as sure as I was dipping you in baptismal waters. Is this the lick we're talking? Nobody knew the mayor on that train. Got on in Ryan County. I was just a businessman passing through. But not with papers in the briefcase. Something better. Something better to relocate. What? What'd you have? Had me a baby in that suitcase. What do you mean? What did you do? I walked to the far end of the train. Where it was just me, and the creature, and the clatter of the tracks. I stepped out between the cars. No! As we passed over the river, I flung it high. For you! Get out! Get out! <coughs> there goes our chance for happiness. And all our hopes and dreams I'll never get to see his face Or know the boy he'd be I can never go see her again Never look her in her eyes again I can never tell her Cast him away. 
Miss Murphy, one of my humor pieces. Oh, great, Daryl. What did she say? She said she really liked it. And could I turn it into a humor piece? <laughs> oh. I, oh, look who just walked in. Does he know this place sells intoxicating beverages? I say he's lonely. Let's find out. Well, boy meets girl. This calls for a slow gin fizz. It does. It does. All right, I'll have one. Have you had one before? I've seen photos. <laughs> so, you lonely since you've been here? Every evening I have a date with my typewriter. <laughs> That's not company. This is what a real person feels like. Just in case you forgot. Well, that does feel real. There's more where that came from. <laughs> <clears throat> now don't drink them both, Lucy. Here you are. Well, what do you think? Oh, that's both sweet but, but tart at the same time. Oh, just like Lucy. <laughs> it's called a slow gin fizz. But you don't have to drink it slow. Well, you are a modern woman, Lucy. A beer. You want to be a writer? Oh, better than that. I want to be a censor. A censor? Why censor? Well, when I was 12, I gave my father a Raymond Chandler mystery novel. I was watching him read it when suddenly his face went the color of a rose. He set the book face down, called for my mother, went to another part of the house and shut the door. I went over to the book to see what he had just read, and right there in the middle of the page was the word Brazier. I thought this must never happen again. So now, a few nights a week, I take home a manuscript, fix myself a Manhattan, and search for hidden erotic content. <laughs> Would you like to do that with me sometime? <laughs> well... Well, look, you got a girl back home. No, no, I, I don't know. Well, don't bring her to Asheville. Why not? Because country girls flatten out under the city lights. Another round! Really? Lady, please, not on a Friday night! <laughs>
Get on wine, make you feel so fine. I like hard liquor, it hits me quicker. Must get on wine, make me feel so fine. I like hard liquor, it hits me quicker. Come on, hey, freak! Coca Cola with the extra out of bonus of a soda with a little kick. How about a rum and Coca Cola with the extra out of bonus of a soda with a little kick? Woo! I was feeling lonesome and homesick, down jacked and dubious. <laughs> Discover what does the trick, bartender. Give me some more of this. For me. Mr. Kane, because Mr. Ames put your propinquity piece on my desk this morning. He seems to think it's ready. Ready? We're publishing it next month. You are? We are. <sighs> Miss Murphy, would it be all right if I were to, to jump for joy? You may. <laughs> Is that the best you've got? <laughs> Another time, then. Yahoo! Oh, Miss Murphy. Daryl, 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 hey! Oh, 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 with a stop in Zebulon to see family. Oh, here's your ticket. Well, Miss Murphy, that train goes right through Hayes Creek. Maybe we could meet there. I could show you some of the places I've been writing about. Well, I've done it for other writers. Mr. Ames, have Lucy add it to my itinerary. Oh, she's gonna be a little late today. Uh, she's uh, under the weather. <laughs> Is that in quotes? Very. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Murphy. I believe that's my fault. Me and Lucy went to the shiny penny last night and had a little bit of a flap doodle. <laughs> you love to pull words out of your head. I have the same habit. I got it from my mother. I got it from my desperate need for attention. <laughs> well, I have a little bit of that too. Have you started anything new? I have. I find I'm writing more and more about home. Mr. Kane, it would be easier to get Lincoln off the face of Mount Rushmore than home out of the heart of a southern writer. I'll see you in Hayes Creek. 
And Mr. Kane, congratulations. Are these all the files from May 15th, 1924? Yes, they are. The laws are changing this year. These records won't be available anymore. Would you like me to help you search again? That would be so kind. The baby was wearing a blue... I know. A blue sweater. Well, maybe in one of these photos we can, we can see if The photos are in black and white, Miss Murphy. Maybe he wasn't dropped off in Raleigh. You should be trying some of the surrounded towns. Charlotte's got an agency. It was dropped off here. Kate, do you remember anybody else coming in looking for a baby dropped off on the same date? Not that I recall. Should there be? I would think so. I know this might be hard to hear, but maybe he didn't care as much as you. If there is truth in this world, he cared. Somehow, he would have come looking. It's only been me behind this counter for the last 19 years. Well, then that's a puzzle I should have sorted out before. Excuse me, ma'am? Sun does shine in Raleigh. Hello, Jimmy Ray. Alice. Young Alice. Not so young. Young forever in my memory. Is this your home? It's nice. Uh, Worked hard over the years. Those your kids? In a way, they're my sister's kids. You married? No, I never married. Close a couple of times. I guess I would have heard. I know you never married. I paid attention. Did well up in Asheville. I had some trips there. Looked up at your building. Never went in, though. Why? You moved on. You published Carson McCullers. You do her well to you. You have been paying attention. I always paid attention to you, Alice. If I didn't, I knew I was in trouble. We were so young. We were. But I wonder, often, was I old enough to have Behave differently, better. Yes. When I came to Raleigh today, it wasn't my intention to see you. I was at the Hall of Records with the same woman who has been there for 20 years. And I asked her if anybody else had looked for the whereabouts of our child. And she said, not one. Not one person. Not you. I didn't, Alice. And you never came to see me. Why? Oh, Alice, is it better to hope or to know? Please. After my father died, we discovered it was he who had funded your scholarship. 
Why? To get you out of town. Guilt. Guilt. Alice, on the train to Raleigh, somewhere in the night, my father took our son and threw him off the train and into the river below.
How can I help you? Oh, I'm a little early. I'm walking Edna home past the bookstore club. Well, guess what? We just closed! <laughs> <laughs> Can I help? Well... <laughs> Marco. <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> For a writer, you're not very good at reading people. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, Marco, you're the first person I wanted to tell. I got published <gasps> in the Asheville <laughs> Southern <laughs> Journal. <laughs> <laughs> My, my. What is it, Billy? Marco, I think I'm starting to see you in a new way. What do you mean? Well, ever since I got back from the war, many things have been different. Of course. But some things remain constant. Hayes Creek, this place, family. But one thing is both constant and ever-changing, and, and I don't know how this is possible. Well, anything's possible with people. <laughs> what is it? Us. There's an us. <laughs> there is if you want there to be. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just never really thought of you that way. <laughs> We're supposed to be Together I know I feel it way down deep in my soul We're never meant to be apart I keep you here inside of my heart I always have, always will Always, always, always will I always have I love you now, I have from the start. I always have, always will, always, always, always will. I always have, always will, always, always, always will. Margo, I have a confession to make. While I was in Asheville, I kissed another girl. Oh, what was it like? Have you ever kissed a chicken? <laughs> yes. <laughs> when was the last time I kissed you? Twelve years and that was on a dare. You ran like a rabbit. Believe it or not, I'm shaking like it was that day. We're never meant to be apart. I love you now, I have from the start. I always have, always will, always, always.
Anybody home? Well, child, just as promised. We're about the same age now. Oh, I'm staying a bit ahead of you. So good to see you, darling. I didn't think I was worth a visit anymore. Daddy, how can you say that? Through the years, reasonableness has laid its hand on my shoulder, and some things I've done before don't quite stand up like they used to. Do you want a glass of tea? Got any of that hooch? I do. How long can you stay? Just one day. One day. That's a short time to say a lot. Is Mama here? No, she's down at the store, but she'll be back. I'm glad to have you alone, though. I can talk to your Mama, but not about some things. Sounds like you've been banking words, Daddy. You've got to around here. Them trees, some nights it's so quiet, you can hear a leaf fall. And you can tell the color of that leaf just by the tiny, crisp crack it makes as it lights on the ground. I know that feeling. Sometimes I hear the fiddlers in town and I know they're playing the sounds of the winds over the lakes back home. What kind of things can't you talk to Mama about? Certainly not about the things that occurred 23 years ago. No. Certainly not about things that occurred 23 years ago. It had to be the most painful day of your life. It was. Wasn't it, sweetheart? Yes. It was. Well, if shame could ever equal pain, I'd say I know how you feel. Because what I did that day made it the most shameful day of my life. Thank you, Daddy. I believe that was the last day my own daddy still had hold over me, and how I felt after that helped me purge him from me. I don't ask for forgiveness. Oh, daddy, I Alice, forgive. I can't even forgive myself. I was thinking, Alice, do you know, whatever happened to that boy? He was adopted by a good family in California. He's educated, successful, raised with very much love. He's a fine young man. That's what I wished for him all along. Maybe your wish has made it so. The sun is gonna shine again. The sun is gonna shine. Your daddy knows we're coming? He sure does. Hey, daddy, it's Billy. A and put some pants on, because there's a lady present. <laughs> all right, all right, let me get them on. <laughs> Hello there, son. I still salute you. Daddy, this is Miss Murphy. Oh, I know all about you. Here, why don't you take a seat? 
Oh, Miss Murphy, would you like a knee high? Yes, thank you. Uh, Miss Murphy, there's a barber shop in Hayes Creek with your magazine stacked on the settee. You know, uh, we're readers here. <laughs> Billy will be published in its next issue. I heard. Mary Lee would have been awfully pleased to know that. Mary Lee? My mother. Uh, Billy, you've got some clothes here, you know that? Good pants and some shirts, too. You ought to take them over to your new place. Well, I could use those, Daddy. Billy, there must be some wonderful stories about your mother. Maybe you should write about her. I don't know. Better to pick from the town's array of cads and scoundrels. <laughs> How do you like it here? It's lovely, Billy. Reminds me of Zebulon in some ways. Mr. Kane, you must find one to a full repose here. I do. Miss Murphy? I'm sorry, Mr. Kane. Uh, Mary Lee, she must have died young. Billy's only 23. Uh, no, uh, Mary Lee died last year at 65. And she had Billy late in life, which is a rarity around these parts where everyone's married and bearing kids before they can even ride a bike. Hey, Billy. There's a crate full of your things in the garage. I don't want to take up Miss Murphy's time with all that. Hey, look what I did find, though. <laughs> ah, a good old pair of boots and... Oh, oh my old baby sweater. Oh, I want to show this to Margo. <laughs> <gasps> Miss Murphy? What is it? I know this sweater. And I know that suitcase. How? My life was born away from me in it. You say you've seen this sweater before. I made it. I knew the say would come. It's you who has the story, Mr. Kane. It's you. Daddy, what are you two talking about? Billy, one evening I was out frog gigging and I went a little farther down the river than I usually go. All right, now where are you fat ones? Me and Mary Lee are gonna eat you for dinner. There you are, Mr. Toad. I hear you over there. Some other. Good Lord, little Moses. Oh. Oh. Bangs and bruises. You're in a heap of trouble, little. Fella? Come on. We gotta get you fixed up. If you came from the sky, then it's the Lord's will that we raise you. And if you came from that train, well, then somebody didn't want you.
Is she? She's half an hour late. This is not like her. Oh, she got a notice from the post office saying there was some special delivery letter. If they can send a notice, why can't they send a letter? Oh, she went over there with that Jimmy Ray to pick it up. She's pretty cozy of Jimmy Ray. He's attractive, isn't he? Oh, Lucy, I don't know how to judge if a man's attractive. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that next oh, oh, oh Daryl, this is a funny 
funniest thing I have ever read in my entire life. We have got to publish this in our next humor column. Uh, what is it? It's a piece by a writer I've never even heard of. Lillian Jones? <gasps> Lillian Jones? Congratulations, Daryl! Oh! <laughs> Lillian Jones is my new pen name. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Miss Murphy, you have been on a tear lately. You have, Miss Murphy, may I be frank? Well, it'll take a while to get used to calling you that, but sure. <laughs> What's come over you? I really miss the dark glare of gloom you brought to work with you every day. <laughs> well, all right. Everybody's gonna find out sooner or later. Years ago, I had a child. Oh, Daryl, you owe me five dollars. <laughs> And recently, I found out that this child is alive and well. He's a fine young man. And as it turns out, he works for me. He works for you. Oh, my God! It's Daryl! Oh, that is so exciting! It's, it's Billy. It's Billy? It's Billy. It's Billy. When was the last time you spoke to him? The night he found out. It's been about a month now, and he hasn't written or called. But the, the, these things take time, don't you think? I'm thinking of taking a trip to lay eyes on him. I mean, I wouldn't know him if I saw him. Hello? Oh my God! <laughs> Hello, uh, my name's Billy Kane. You're a handsome boy. You take after your father. And that would be me. <laughs> well, it's an honor to meet you, sir. Uh, Lucy, shall we go look for that uh, pencil box? Oh, missing pencil box? Yes, 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 yes. The... <laughs> Miss Murphy. I came to apologize. You don't have to apologize. No, no, I do. I was selfish. I only thought about how I was hurt that night, but, but it wasn't just me. It was every one of us. So I went to the site of my real birth, a small cabin in the woods. How did you find it? Your father loves you very much. He took me there and, and he told me of that awful night, how I was torn from your arms. And I realized that truth walks beside us like a shadow. But one day, one day it merges with us. And until then, we cannot be truly whole. Oh, Billy. Billy. You are no doubt your mother's son. <laughs> oh, and Lucy, I believe I owe you an apology as well. I might have been a little misleading. Well, we can start fresh. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Margo. I'm Billy's fiance. Margo, you are? <laughs> well, thanks for letting me know. What? <laughs> Alice, are you going to the wedding? Of course I am. He's my son. Not theirs. <laughs> Ours. Put getting married on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the Miss Murphy we know and love. I have a vision of how our life will be. Rolling like a river, peaceful, wild, and free. I have a vision of how our life will go. All of our kids singing while you play piano. And Lucy and I are getting married. <laughs> no, we're not, but wouldn't that have been fun? 